Well, as we are entering into 2014 and ending 2013, I thought it would be a great idea to talk about how we can end the year right and enter into the new year in the best possible way. You may have heard this one. They say that a New Year's resolution is something that goes in one year and out the other. It's not a bad one, right? Well, 40% of Americans, I read, will make a New Year's resolution this year. And I've also read that 25% of those who make a New Year's resolution will break that New Year's resolution within the first two weeks. Mark Twain said this about New Year's resolutions. Now is the accepted time to make your regular, annual, good resolutions. Next week, you can begin paving the road to hell with them as usual. I like that. Uh, a little rough, but, you know, it's got a lot of truth to it. I see that in the gym every January. Um, those of us in my circle of uh, buddies who work out on a regular basis, uh, we kid around about that, how the gym is so full in January and then usually by the time we get to February, it's just the same old faces again because everybody has sort of dropped out. Well, instead of giving you another uh, opportunity for another paving stone on that road, uh, asking you to make another resolution, I want to instead give you an idea of something that you can do that's a little bit simpler to help you have an, a good ending to this year and a good beginning to the new year. And that is this. Review where you are in terms of where you want to be with God, with others, with yourself. And then readjust if needed, and then recommit to what God would have you to do. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. Reviewing, readjusting, and recommitting. I'm going to be using our church vision statement as a foundation for that because our church vision statement says love God, love others, love life. That's what we are about. Loving God, loving others, loving life. And so we'll use each one of those three. How are we doing with God? How are we doing with others? And how are we doing with with life, with ourself? Now, I want to just change the subject a little bit and mention this. You know, my wife gives me every one of my day, days off, as a rule, a honey-do list. Any of you get those? Any of you guys uh, get those honey-do lists? A few of the hands are going up. Okay. Well, I usually add my own things to the list, and my days off are just a different kind of work, you know, working in a different location. But it's a good thing. It's a good way to, uh, to get through the day. By, by the time... Monday evening is over, my day off. I usually find that I've accomplished everything on my list and I feel good about what I've done and I feel refreshed as well. Now there have been a few days, not very many, but I will confess where I had no list of things to do and I found at the end of the day I accomplished a little more than watching TV all day and feeding myself. Have you ever had a day like that? And then I feel guilty because I haven't done anything at all. Well, have you ever been on vacation with somebody who has scheduled and planned every single minute of the vacation? Some of you are laughing about that, right? Well, we know that the best way to accomplish a lot on vacation is to have it all planned out. The best way to accomplish a successful day off is to have a plan and to kind of follow it through. And the best way to get into the new year is to also have a plan and to carry that through. Abraham Lincoln said, it's not at the end, it's not how many years in your life, it's how much life in your years. And I really like that. Some people manage to pack an awful lot into their years. And the way that we do that is through uh, having a plan and sticking to it. A wise man once said this, years end is neither an end nor a beginning, but a going on. Many, many times, as a matter of fact, probably every New Year's Eve, I sit with my family on the couch, watching all the hoopla in Times Square, 
And I wonder to myself, why do we bother with this celebration? I mean, it's just another day. You ever have that thought? Why are we, why are we bar- bothering with this? And, and the reason is because it is good to annually review, to take time to think about the year passing, to mark it as a milestone. The picture that I'd like you to have in your head as I'm talking about this is this, a relay race. And it occurred to me, as I mentioned, this, some of you may not know. Does everybody here know what a relay race is? You probably all do. If you've been a kid in school, you've probably run a relay race. Uh, what I'm thinking about is the ones that you see in the Olympics, you know, where they've got teams of maybe four runners, and each runner runs one lap, and then they pass the baton on to the next runner, and then that runner grabs the baton and takes off. Well, you know, relay teams don't just get together and run. They plan. They figure out who's going to run first, second, third, fourth, based on who can have the fastest start, who finishes well, who's got a great uh, maybe uh, sprint speed, who can catch up to somebody. And they also practice the most important part of the relay race. You know what that is? Passing the baton. Yes, because if you get the baton passed well, you have a good chance anyway of finishing and maybe even winning. But if you drop the baton, your chances are really good that you're going to lose. So here's what I want you to be thinking about. You are the racer in that race. You are the one running the race. The relay race is this. One year is one lap. And as you get to the end of the year, you're passing the baton on. But guess who you're passing the baton on to? Yourself. (laughs) And then you're going to run another lap, uh, running the the race of life. And just like a relay racer, it's a really good thing if you can pass that baton on well. You're going to have your best race. You're going to run the best year if you've taken time to pass the baton well. And by that I mean reviewing, readjusting, and recommitting. The Apostle Paul wrote this, Don't you know that in a race the runners all compete? But only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win it. What he's talking about is the race of being a good Christian. Paul knows that the race to be a good Christian is not a sprint. It's not a 50-yard dash. It is a relay race. It is one where we pass the baton uh, to ourselves. We keep on going and going, and eventually we pass the baton to the next generation. Now, there are three parts that I I mentioned. Loving God, loving life, and loving others. Now, when we make that transition from one year to the next, if we pause and we reflect on where am I in terms of where I want to be, in terms of my relationship with God, the things we want to ask ourselves Jesus said, love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So, where are you in terms of loving God? Do you love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Where are you with Christ? Uh, And if you're not where you want to be, what are you going to do about it? These are the questions that you want to ask yourself spiritually. And then, in terms of your relationships, loving others. Are you as loving as you want to be with those who are close to you? Do you have peace? Uh, Do you have patience with those who are around you? If not, what do you need to do to improve? Um, How can you be more loving? And then in terms of taking care of yourself, the uh, Parish Nurse Association lifts up four identifiers for health. Spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental. And those are good things to ask yourself. Am I sharpening the saw? Have I got a good emotional support network? Do I have people around me that that love me, that care for me? And if not, this is a great time of year to reach out. Uh, maybe there's somebody in your circle of family or friends, uh, your acquaintances, that you, you know that you probably should reach out to with a note, with a call, something, to let them know that you care about them, that you want them 
to be a part of your life, that they're important to you. This is the time to reconnect. New Year's is a natural time to reconnect. So take care of yourself emotionally, mentally, physically. Maybe this is the time for you to get that checkup you've been putting off. Maybe this is the time to stop smoking cigarettes. Maybe this is the time to start exercising a little bit more. So take a look. Now, when we've reviewed where we are, the next thing we want to do is make a readjustment. Change if we need to. If we recognize there's something I need to do that I'm not doing, I want to start doing it. Or if there's something that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing and I want to stop doing it, let me see what this is. And it could be something in terms of our relationship with God, with other people, or in, in ourselves. Now here's a, a secret of Christianity. It's all about love. Somebody that I some sermon that I heard some years ago, the pastor said that making change in your life is like steering a speedboat. Any of you ever steered a speedboat at high speed around making a turn? The second you let go, the wheel just spins straight and the boat goes straight. It's kind of like driving a car. Now we've got power steering. It's a little bit less so that way, but when you go around a turn, you hold that wheel, and the, and the second you let go, the wheel turns back. And making a change in your life can be just like that. You're making that turn, you're holding on to the wheel, and the second you let go, boom. And so it becomes a question of how long can I hold on? Well, here's the secret of Christianity. Love gives us the power. There is so much power in that statement of Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. If you want to do something to God, for God, maybe you're not giving God what you should be giving in terms of your time, your energy, your prayers, your devotion, your attendance, Bible reading, whatever it is. If you want to give God something more in the year ahead, you're not going to succeed if you're just holding on to that wheel and struggling. But if you're loving God more, and if your commitment is to love God more, God's going to give you the strength that you need to make that change just through love. If you recognize in your relationships that you need more patience, that you need more tolerance of somebody, that you need to be more loving, more gentle, more kind, whatever it is, those are fruits of the Holy Spirit. So if you love God more, and if you love that person more, that power, that strength to make those changes will be there. And the same thing if you want to make changes in yourself. If you love yourself more, you'll make that change that you know that you should make. So the power to change, and this is the great secret of Christianity, the power to make changes lies in love. There is so much power for us in loving God, in loving our neighbor, in loving ourselves. Now there is a Russian Christian novelist, and I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce his name right, but you may have heard of him, Yevgeny Zemetyin. Zemetyin. He said, a man is like a novel until the very last page you don't know how it will end. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth reading. And so it is with you and God. As this year ends and a new year begins, the race goes on, but the ending is in your hands. And how this year is going to come out is up to you. So review, readjust, recommit. Every year, the first Sunday of the new year, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, would have a worship service in which he asked everybody to recommit to the Lord, to renew spiritually, to recharge spiritually, to be re-equipped for the year ahead. The Apostle Paul told us this, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We recognize that we are in a relay race. So let's run the race well, pass the baton, make a good start for the new year. And run, as Paul said, to win the race that is ahead of us. Let us pray.
Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity that each new year brings to review, to readjust, to recommit to you. We thank you, Lord, that through loving you, we get more life in our years. So guide us, Lord, that we may be faithful in all you call us to do, to love you, to love each other, to love the life that you have given us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for all this and pray all this.